today's video we're going to be checking out sure card now this is the beta version of it and this is the free version so this isn't publicly available just yet but you can sign up to be notified as soon as it's released so sure card is it a woocommerce beta well first of all let's just get out of the way it's not intended to be a woocommerce beta in fact it's a very different type of plugin its main aim is to help you sell digital downloads subscriptions and also donations so there's lots of different ways you use it now you can do these kinds of things with WooCommerce, but there's extra plugins required which generally have a price tag attached to them. This, in this example, is perfectly and totally free. So what exactly do you have? How does it work? And how do you get started with it? Well, if you're used to coming from a tool like Thrivecart, where you're used to dealing with these kinds of things, where there's a, an online connection to the Thrivecart servers, then this is gonna be very, very familiar. However, if you're coming from the background of dealing with things like WooCommerce, this is gonna be a little bit different. Let me explain and show you why. Now, once you've installed and activated the plugin, you'll be presented with this Welcome to Shure card. Now, we can go ahead and set up your store. So if you're coming from the likes of WooCommerce, where everything is done inside WordPress, this is going to be a little different. We're going to connect to the SureCart servers and various different parts of the whole process will actually reside on the actual servers itself, which reduces the load on your website, therefore should make your website quicker, especially when you're dealing with the online payments, dealing with transactions, those kinds of things. So let's quickly go ahead and let me show you. I've already set this up, but I'll show you how you go through the process of connecting it to the SureCart servers. All we need to do is click on set up my store. Once you've done that, you can see we've got to connect up and we can create our account or log into an account if we already have one. So I've already got one. So I'm going to go ahead and we'll log in and connect everything up. So I'll go ahead, simply sign in. As we've done that, any store you may already have created, will, this will list it for you. Or you can go ahead and create a new store. For this example, let's create a new store so you can see how it all works. So we'll give it a name. We can set our default currency. We'd set in this example, I'm based in the UK, so we're gonna go for pounds. And then finally, you can set your time zone if it's a different time zone to what is detected. GMT is perfectly fine in this example. We'll click on next step. Now we can connect up to the payment gateways. Now at the moment, only Stripe is currently being supported. PayPal is coming soon, and there are also another range of additional payment gateways that are being introduced in the near future. This is hopefully intended to open up other countries where Stripe and PayPal may be a little too expensive or actually not even available. So there will be additional ones coming as this rolls out and becomes a more fully featured and fully fledged product. If you want to, though, you can go ahead and skip this step. So for this example, I'll skip it. And there we go, that now gives us an API token which we can then connect out to our store. So let's copy that. Let's go back to WordPress. And we've now created our SureCart online account, set up our store, set up the basic configuration options. Now all we need to do is drop that API token inside here, complete our installation, and now everything is basically connected to SureCart. So now we can go ahead and start to build things from this side. Now, when it comes to working with SureCart, there's a couple of things to take into consideration. It's a little different to what you're used to. Like I say, if you're coming from something like Thrivecart, this will probably feel a lot more familiar than something like WooCommerce. We basically have things broken down into products and forms. So your product is, as its name would suggest, it could be a subscription, a donation, or an actual digital product. And then your form is your checkout form, basically. And you kind of connect the two up, you customize the checkout form, those kinds of things. So let's take a look, first of all, at how we create a product. Then we'll take a look at creating a form, integrating that into our design. And then we'll take a look at some of the other options included. So let's go ahead and create a product. So from here, we can go ahead, we can give this a name. So we can name our product. We can choose what product type it is then, whether it's a single product or it's a subscription-based fee. And we can set various different tiers up, including lifetimes and so on. And again, we'll take a look at that in a moment. And then we can input price information. Or if we want to, when it comes to donations, we can set this to be and allow the customer to pay whatever they want. So you've seen this on many sites where you can say, I want that ebook, for example, and you can name your price on it. This does the same kind of thing. If we enable that, you can see we can set a minimum amount and a maximum amount. So you can set this to be zero if you wanted to and put a maximum, or you can put a minimum and a maximum, whatever works for you. For this example, though, let's just disable that. So let's just call this a simple product. We'll set this to be a single payment and we'll give this a price of $9.99. We don't want to allow people to choose what they want to pay. Now, if we take a look at the right hand side, you can see, do we want to make this an available for purchase product? So you can set these to be kind of offline as it were. 
You can set up taxes if you want to, so you can charge tax based upon the country you're in, and there's quite a comprehensive tax setup included in this, and we'll take a look at that in a moment. Then we can set our product image, so let's go ahead and upload an image. So once you've added your product image, you can then go ahead, add any download files for your ebook, your digital files, whatever they are inside here. You can just upload those and then that'll connect that up to this particular product. For this example, let's just leave it as it is and let's say create our product. So there's our product. Everything has now been created. So the next thing we want to do is create a form that allows us to purchase this and go through the checkout process. So let's hop over now on the left hand side underneath show cart down to the form section. If we open that up, you can see I've already created a couple inside here. We can go ahead and we can set these to live. We can set them to test modes, those kinds of things. But let's go ahead and add a new one. And then this gives us the option to, first of all, give this a name. So we're going to call this simple product. Then we can choose what type of form we want to use. Now, this will depend upon the kind of product or the service or the donation, whatever you're kind of working with. So you can see we've got a couple of basic ones like default, simple, sections. We've also got a two column layout. A donation if you want to work with that sort of pay as much as you want donation kind of setup and if you want you've also got invoices inside you as well so people can use this as a kind of invoice with a invoice number those kinds of things we'll worry about that in a different video for this example though let's go for something really simple like the default one we'll select that you can see over on the right hand side now we can configure a few things including like the form highlight color the gap so you can also set up a custom thank you page inside you if you want to. You can enable that, then connect that up to whatever thank you page you want to create. And you can set this up to be going through to an upsell kind of thing. Lots of different things you can do. And I'm sure when the pro version ships out, upsells, cross-sells, downsells, all those kinds of things, sales sequences will be part of the pro version. Don't know for definite, but I'm sure that's probably the way it'll go with these custom thank you pages. I'll be able to build sequences, those kinds of things. Let's disable that for now, though. But let's just say we go to next. And then this is where we can go ahead and connect this form up to our product. You can see we've got the option for add a product. We'll select that option. And now we can go ahead and find any product, any subscription, anything we've got as part of our setup of Shurecart inside our website. So for this, we'll go for our simple product. We'll select that. You can see we can now have this to have quantities prices we can add additional products inside here so you can build up as many as you want to create whatever kind of checkout that you want to it's not limited to just one product then like i say you can go ahead and add another product so we can say we will put the subscription model in and we'll say we put the monthly subscription well there you go there's a subscription option if we don't want that we can simply remove it so we can create our form linking it to whatever products we want from our collection of products so you can see now how this is differing from the likes of something like WooCommerce. You then have product options where you can configure how you want this checkout to work. So customers must purchase all the options. So if you put something like as an upsell and a downsell and you want to force them into purchasing that particular thing, well, you can set that so they have to purchase all. Must select one option, which is great if you've got multiple choice. So for example, that monthly, yearly, or a lifetime subscription model, you can allow them to choose one of those, or you can select multiple options. Let's just say, for this example, customer must select one of the options. There's only one there, so it doesn't really matter. And again, we've got that custom thank you page option if we want to utilize it. You can check it and then just go and connect it up to what page you want. Again, let's just disable that. So now we've got that, we can create this. So once we've created it, this then takes us over to the form, which we can start to customize. Now, don't worry about this flashing section. That's basically because I haven't connected it to my live Stripe account. So what will appear inside there will be your Stripe payment process section. So now you can see we've got the simple product is selected. This is currently set to live. If we want to change that, we can set it to test while we're configuring things. We will set it back to live. That's fine. Now we've got name and email. We've got our summary of our product or products. If you want to enable coupon codes, you can add that inside here. You've got your total, you've got your purchase. So you can see it's a very, very simple kind of setup. But what we can now do is if we want to, we can customize this using Gutenberg widgets. So if we come over to our form, for example, you can see when we hover over any of these, we get the normal options for you know Gutenberg kind of blocks. So for example, where we've got the name, you can see we select that, we get the options on the right hand side for that particular block, the same for email. We can go ahead, we can change those, edit them, add more in. So let's say, for example, we wanted to include VAT as part of this for tax, we can come up to the plus, and you can see we've now got a load of sure cart options inside here, address, checkout form, totals, order confirmation, lots of different things. So you can customize this form in various different ways. Let's just say, for example, we wanna put that VAT option in there, we can simply add that to our form. We'll drop that underneath there. 
you can see that now puts our tax ID in there. So now we've got a tax option inside there. Let's say we want to put something in that allows people to confirm that they're happy, they've read our terms and conditions, and we want to stop them from being able to purchase this without confirming that, just so we cover ourselves, we can do that as well. So let's just say we want to put that somewhere up like this. We can just click on the plus. We can say browse all, and now we can come down and we can use something like the switch or the checkbox. Let's just choose checkbox for this example. You see that drops a checkbox inside there. We can now just simply come in and change the text on there. And we'll say, I agree. I agree to the TNCs. And if you want to, you can make any of this linked. So we could just select this, click on link, send people over to our terms and conditions. So they can read them, make sure everything's okay. And then you can see we can go ahead and make sure this is a required field just to make sure that they actually check out and confirm that they're happy with our TNCs. So you can see we can customize the form in any kind of way we want with a lot of different options available to us, all part of Shuacart, all very, very easy to add in and customize. Once we've done that, we can click on publish. We'll say we're happy with this. We'll publish it completely. And that's the end of the process. And so now we can come back out of this and you see we get a short code. So now what we can do is we can simply copy that short code. Once we've copied that, we can now use this anywhere inside our site. So let's go ahead and open up a page. We'll add a new one. We'll call this buy a simple product. And all we need to do is add in the short code option. And inside there, we'll simply paste in our short code. And there's our form. Now you can't see anything on the back end of this, but it is there. And let's just publish this page. And let's go ahead and view this. And you see, there's our form inserted directly into our page design. All really, really simple. So now we could go through, we could put in our name, our email address, agree the terms and conditions, go ahead, fill out our payment details when you've got things connected up. And then you can go ahead and you can purchase this. And then all the things behind the scenes will carry on. So pretty cool, really easy to be done. So you can repeat this process with as many different kinds of products as you want. Let's take a quick look now at how you'd set up a subscription model and how we can set that up with lifetime deals, those kinds of things. It's incredibly easy to do. So again, what we're gonna do is we're gonna come into our products. Let's go ahead and add a new subscription. So we're gonna call this subscription sample. This time we're gonna change this over to a subscription model. So we'll select that option. And you can see this now gives us a relatively similar kind of setup to what we had with the single payment. But now we can go ahead and set a few things up. We can set up the price. So this is going to be our monthly charge. So we're going to say monthly, this is $19.99. Repeats every month, day, week, year, or lifetime. So you can set that up to be exactly what you want. We're going to ignore the free trial days, but you could set up trial days if you wanted to. We're going to say add another price in. We're going to say this now is an annual pricing. So what we'll do is this is going to cost you $99.99 if you wanted to do this one every year. And then finally, we're going to add a third and final one, which is our lifetime deal, which we're going to say here's $499.99. One payment set to lifetime, and you can see the lifetime switch switches over. Again, you can set up trial days if you want to inside here, but we've basically now created a subscription. Set that up for a monthly, a yearly, and also a lifetime deal. So again, we can do the same thing. We can upload our image. And once we've done that, we can say create our product. So now that's created the product. There's a couple of things that I want to show you before we move on to creating the form for this. First of all, if you want to, you can actually mouse over this and you see you get the copy a buy link. Now this is one of the things that I don't really think is that intuitive from a UI point of view. Only because I watched a video the other day did I even see this was an, an, even a thing. But what you can do is you can copy that buy link and then you can create a page, create whatever you want, and you can use those links with your own custom buttons to insert buy links that would take you then through to the checkout form that we'll create in a moment. But I think that needs to be something that's either on there all the time or just a little bit more evident. You also see we've got these little three dots where we can archive this pricing option or we can delete it. And you can see we can close these up. So if we get a lot of options inside here, we can toggle these to make things a little easier. Again, it would be nice to see a toggle all option. So when you've got a lot of different prices inside here, you could just toggle all of them and then just open the one or ones that you want to. Just little UI things that I think will be tweaked, but just worth noting. And you see each one of these prices all have this copy by link option included. Okay, so we've set things up for our subscription. We'll update that now to make sure everything is saved and committed. We'll hop back over to our forms. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new form. We'll call this checkout tutorial. And let's just choose a different option this time. Let's go for this two column. We'll select that 
Again, we can customize the look of this if we want to. We can change the highlight color to something different. So let's just say we'll go for this sort of blue color this time. Don't worry about a thank you page, custom thank you page, and we'll click on next. And again, now we can go ahead and add in our product. So this time we're gonna add a new product. You can see if we scroll down, you can see we've got simple product. We've got our subscription samples. And we can go ahead and we can set this up. So let's just add the first one in, which is our first pricing option. Let's add our second one, which is our every year, and our third one in, which is our lifetime deal. So you can see now we've added all of those options inside here. Again, you've got these options on the right to remove these if you've accidentally added something you didn't want. And we can go ahead now and just set the product options for must purchase all, must select one, customer can select multiple. Well, for this example, again, they can select one option and we can click on create. That will take us over. Now we get our checkout form, which we can again go ahead and customize should we want to. You can see this is a different layout. We've got our address included. We've got to switch this time for our agree into the terms and conditions. So this is a little bit more fully featured, but also created straight out of the box for you. It's picked up our styling color, which we can tie into our actual uh, sort of design for our theme, those kinds of things. So another thing that I would love to see inside you is this have the ability to pick up the theme colors if you're using global styling. Uh, for example, this might work with Astra because, you know, sort of Sujay from Brainstorm Force is behind this particular product. So it would be nice to see those kinds of niceties being linked in. So it would make the whole process just a little bit more integrated into the whole design of your store, your online site. Okay, so we'll say we're happy with the overall look of this and we'll click on publish. So we've committed our design and let's go ahead and just insert this now into a different page. So again, like we've seen before, there's our buyer subscription. We can simply grab that code from there, hop over to our pages. We'll add a new one in, do the title. And all we need to do is go ahead, grab that short code block again, and select that from there and drop in our short code. And there we go. Drop our short code in. We'll publish this. Go ahead and preview this. And you see, this is now our checkout. You can see this is now using that two column layout. We've got our options for the different types of plans. You can see we've got our monthly, our yearly, and we've got our lifetime deal. We've then got our information for contact, which is our email address, and this time our full address. Then we'd have our payment options. And finally, we have a switch for the agreed to purchase condition. So we can select that and we can click on purchase this. If we change any of these, you see the price reflects that in the button at the bottom. And again, you can see that's now picked up the color that we set up for this particular checkout. So it's very easy to set things up. Once you've got everything configured, you can then integrate that into your online website, your store, anywhere you want kind of thing. Very easy to do. So let's hop back over now and take a look at some of the different settings and options we have as part of Surecart itself. So let's come back over to the Surecart options in the left-hand side. Now, you can see we've got things like products, which we've taken a look at, and forms we've taken a look at. We've also got things like coupons, orders, invoices, those kinds of things. So let's go ahead and take a look at something like the orders. Inside there, this will then list any of the orders that have been completed, and you'll find transactional information about the purchaser, the order, the date, status, whether it's completed or failed, subscriptions, those kinds of things. You've also got invoices which again will show you any invoices that have been created. And again, you've got the invoice number, the date, status, and so on. Customers will give you a full breakdown of all the customers that have purchased something from you. And you can see I've got just myself inside you. Gives the name, email address, and the date this was created. And if we come in and open this up, it'll give us a little bit more information. It'll give us, again, the same email address and name, but also any customer orders, any charges, any subscriptions we currently have running, any purchases. You can see this is connected up as a WordPress user. So this disconnect and this connection kind of things is this is connecting this information over to the Surecart service. This is part of that connection that you have. You can also go ahead and things like notifications by subscribe by email, those kinds of things. If you've got any subscription models and you've got those connected up inside you, this will show any subscriptions you have active or canceled and so on. And if we go into the plugin section, this is going to kind of give us the ability to find your connection details. So if you change your API token, for example, you can do that. You've also got some options for performance and the uninstall and delete, which is something you probably already know. I like the uninstall and delete option, which will remove everything from your copy of WordPress. If you decide to test this, don't like it and want to remove it, or for whatever reason, it'll take all the data and stuff with it. 
And also we've got settings. If we come in here, you'll see this now gives us some basic options for the store settings. Some of the things we set up right back at the beginning when we created the actual connection to the Surecard servers. So the store name, the store URL, the currency you're working with and the time zone. So you can change all of these. Your design and branding will give you some basic information where you can upload your own custom logo, which will be included in various different parts of Surecard, and also your brand color. So again, like I say, this is nice to have a global kind of color, but also it'll be just quite useful to have the ability to connect this up to your theme and pull in colors from there. So when you change a global color in your theme, it will change the brand color inside here as well. Just be a nice little thing to have. Contact information for your store or your business, whatever it is inside here. Customer notification, this is where you can see your notification information. So the sender's name, the reply to email address. Then you've got your order confirmation email and refund email, so you can enable or disable this. You can also come down and you can customize those different notifications, the emails, those kinds of things. So you can see you've got order confirmation. If we click on that, that will show us the thank you for your order. We can preview this email, see exactly what it's gonna look like. And you can send your test email. But you're going to go ahead and you want to make changes to this to customize it you are going to need to get in and do a little bit of coding yourself so it would be nice to see this being taken over to a drag and drop setup where you've got basic placeholder widgets you can drop in for things like the total amounts the order details order number you know the products you've ordered those kinds of things but for now you can still get in there and customize this if you want to change the text on anything you can simply highlight it make changes save it once you've finished preview it, those kinds of things so that's pretty cool any subscriptions that are running, you can see this gives us information about those. If we come back to the customer notifications, you can see we've got coming soon for abandoned order emails and for subscription dunning emails. Now, if you're not used to a dunning email, it's basically if a payment for a subscription fails, these are an emails or an email sequence that will be sent out to handle that side of things. Whether these are going to be included in the free version or it'll be a pro feature, we'd have to take a look at a little bit more detail, but they are something that's coming. So, you know, you're going to have those. Your customer portal then you can see you can allow subscription changes quantity changes and subscription cancellations you can enable or disable those features and you've also got your store details for your terms of service and your privacy policy links to either on this store or you know wherever you've got that could be downloads or anything taxes as its name would suggest allows you to set up various different taxes for different regions whether you want to set tax collection to enabled or disabled and you can see we've got different regions australia canada eu uk united states and so on and if we open those up, you can see it's telling us we're not actually collecting anything there. So we can go ahead, click on collect tax and set up what needs to be set up. And finally, we've got the data export, which allows us to export any of the information that's included as part of our account. So it charges coupons, those kinds of things. Export them as a CSV and then import them into whatever you kind of want. So you can get access to your data. Now, there's one thing that I found a little bit frustrating on you because I'd set this up to... Uh, not use my payment gateway because I wanted to test things out. And obviously I don't want to connect them to a live Stripe payment gateway. I didn't know how you'd go back and actually connect that up so you could test things out or go live when you're ready. In fact, what you've got to do is you've got to come into the plugin section, which doesn't feel very intuitive to me. This should be inside the settings. Where you've got your API token, you can click on Find My API Token. That will take you over to the Shuacart servers, and you'll see a lot of the options are still listed inside here, but we also have payment processors. So you can click to open that up, and you can connect up to Stripe from here, or PayPal when it comes out, or the PayPal sandbox. So it is available, it's just hidden away a little bit, so I would like to see that in the settings section, just to be a little clearer. But you see you've got things like your billing information, so this is for your pro plans, uh, developer information, which obviously things like API token, webhooks, those kinds of things. These are probably going to be more to do with the pro plan when that's released. And obviously there's going to be a either a lifetime, possibly a monthly, an annual subscription. I don't really know how this is going to work. So we have to keep an eye on that. But that's basically how the Surecart plugin works. It is very different to WooCommerce. It's a different kind of way of working where you have the Surecart servers are doing part of the heavy lifting and your website is kind of just embedding the information into it to be used for the checkout process as it were. Whether you like this is going to be dependent upon you but a lot of the comments that I saw were you don't have access to your own data, you don't own your own data, well you can export that data should you need to so that option is there if you want to get access to it. But as always, what are your thoughts on Surecart? Are you excited to see this? Is this something you've been looking forward to to get you away from WooCommerce to handle things like donations, subscription models, or digital download products, get you away from other services? Let me know in the comments section below. 
I'll also put a link to the Shuakart site where you can sign up and get notified as soon as this actually comes out of beta and becomes publicly available. So let me know your thoughts, all links down below. As always, my name is Paul C, this is WP Tats, and until next time, take care.